In this video, we will see all the painting processes with an airbrush, how to mask the figure in different ways and how far the airbrush can take the work. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more resin kit tutorials and galleries. We will start with a grey primer coat to all the parts to paint. I used the airbrush to apply it, although the primer came from a spray can. I did this in order to get a thinner and softer paint coat. I also do this to save a lot of material, because we have more control over the flow and paint area. For the hair bangles, I applied a flat white coat, as well as with the base. For some reason, flat paints tend to be more opaque than glossy paints, especially whites, so they cover better using less paint. After that, I added an iridescent or interference white acrylic. This is a water-based paint that came from a tube, which I mix with its own thinner to make it flow through the airbrush. And last, I cover both the hair and base with a gloss transparent coat to protect them and have a very shiny look. The second area to paint is the flesh color base for the figure's head, applied with airbrush as well, covering all the surface needed. After the flesh base, which became the shadow areas, I apply a lighter flesh tone to give it proper contrast and volume to the face. Next color is a dark brown as a base for the belts, the hair parts and the jacket. This color was made adding a little bit of black to the brown. Over this base I added a lighter and reddish brown color to create volume. You should always add the lighter colors thinking about the airbrush some sort of light source, so use the upper angles of the figure. To seal and protect these paint coats, I use a tra transparent flat coat that dries fast and leaves a smooth appearance. You can cover many small mistakes under a good transparent coat. Once the paint is perfectly dry after a day or so, we can start adding the masks. In this case, I am using a sticky gum named Tuck. This material doesn't leave any stains or residues on the parts once removed. It is very easy to apply and it can be reduced many many times over. The border lines can be detailed using a modeling or a sculpting tool. I also used some masking tape for the belts, cutting the tape to the width of each one. I also strive to use the simplest way to mask an area add some tape for the smaller belt as well. To mask the hair white area, I used liquid latex, to which I add a little bit of black acrylic paint in order to see where it is applied. This is important because latex is transparent and it is easy to leave some parts uncovered or maybe have some thin areas. I use a toothpick mounted on a mechanical pencil grip. Never use brushes to apply latex as it is very hard to remove from the bristles. The latex coat should be thick and opaque so it will be easy to remove once the painting is over. We can haste the latex curing time using a hand dryer before adding a second coat. For the belt borders I also use latex. I use I this mask masking technique, technique a lot. First covering, First covering most, most of the area, area with mask masking tape, tape and then covering, then covering the border the lines with latex so we so get, we a, get very a very defined, defined and well, well sealed, sealed area. area. Once the latex, latex has, has dried, dried the belts, I can, I can adjust, adjust the mask, the mask borders, borders as I need, as I need them. them. For this end, I recommend some metallic or plastic tool. Don't use anything porous, such as good, so it doesn't stick to it and maybe come off during these steps. We use the same dark brown base to the rest of the hair as we did before. And add the lights with the reddish brown as well. For the body and the arms, I used a solid dark green as the base. Then added a yellowish green tone to do the lights of both the body and arms. 
and seal the paint with the transparent flat spray coat. This gives the cloth a lycra-like finish to it. Now I can take the masking off the hair bangles since I am done painting this part. I help myself with the toothpick because I know it will stick to the latex I will not scrape the paint beneath. If the latex is sold, it might get harder to remove because it tends to break and clump easily and is not as resilient as new latex. The last masking area was the green on the body and arms, so we can paint the bright yellow. I first used as much masking tape as possible near the border of the colors. Then I used small patches to close the mask bit by bit without reaching the borders. Once covered as much as possible with tape, I used the latex to cover the borders. If we are careful applying the latex now, we will have less work when adjusting these masks later on. After masking, I applied the glossy yellow paint over the parts. You should consider that glossy paints tend to leave a thicker paint coats that may rough the mask borders a little bit. This is why I chose to do this gloss paint at last.